At times, when we hear about royal palaces, we envision a glamorous residence in Europe, Asia, or the Middle East. Rarely if ever does popular culture mention the royal palaces of Africa, especially below the Sahara. So today, I wanted to speak on a little known African palace in the heart of Central Africa. <laughs> By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. And so, if you're interested, the link to Patreon is in the description box below. In a previous video, I spoke about another African palace that very few people discuss. It was a palace that archaeologists discovered from the Songhai Kingdom of Gao. This palace is believed to have existed around the 10th century. In it, they found pottery all the way from China and a bathroom equipped with a drain pipe. These are very clear signs of luxury and sophisticated architecture. There were multiple palaces and royal dwellings all across the African continent in the north, west, east, and even the south. But Central African palaces are hardly in the discussion, and that leads us to the topic of this video, the Royal Palace of Wara, the capital of the Kingdom of Wadai. The Kingdom of Wadai was known by several different names. It was founded by the Tunjur people as they moved westward from Darfur. In the 17th century, one ruler by the name of Abrahim Abed al-Karim introduced Islam and founded the Kolak dynasty, which ruled until 1915. At the capital of Wadai lies the ruins of a royal palace. Unfortunately, aside from the palace compound, very little is left of the capital. One description of the capital comes to us from an Egyptian traveler named Al-Tunisi. He described Wara as relatively extensive. Another visitor claimed that Wara had gigantic dimensions. Air photographs taken in 1961 provided very valuable insights into the architecture and the general plan of the palace compound. The ruins of the royal palace are nothing if not more impressive in the middle of this open space, and these remains which have thus preserved an appearance of undeniable majesty constitute the finest example of ancient architecture in the Republic of Chad. These buildings must have been started by the founder of the Wadayan dynasty, Abid al-Karim, who probably discovered the site in the course of pasturing his herd in this district. The descendants of these rulers lived there until 1850 when the Sultan Muhammad Sharif abandoned the site for Abechi. The age of the palace ruins are said by one source to be uncertain as some attribute the palace to Abid al-Karim's son, and others give a much later date. Near the palace is also a cemetery that housed the tombs of 11 Wadai kings. Also in the vicinity of the palace was a sacred mount, where the enthronement ceremonies for a new king took place. There, the people of Wadai mixed traditional African religion with Muslim traditions. The last time this took place was actually in 1901. We're fortunate enough in the African diaspora to have such vivid descriptions of the palace. Bear with me as I share the quotes describing this royal abode. Built of baked brick, the group comprises the palace and its outhouses and a mosque. About 100 meters in front of the bright red buildings can be seen a line of dry stone walling. J.B. LaBeouf believes that the stone wall may be the remains of a defensive wall. According to Al-Tunisi, inside this enclosed wall contained the Queen Mother, the houses of the nobles, the eunuchs' lodgings, the pages and grooms, and the harem. The palace proper comprises four buildings or groups of geometrical constructions surmounted by a rectangular tower more than 10 meters high built into the outer wall. Entry is by a single door facing west and looking onto the square, open to all, great and small, rich and poor. Each enters and leaves without restraint, as the chronicler puts it. It was still necessary, however, 
to pass through six other doors, of which one was called the Iron Door, in order to reach the royal apartments. At each door, one had to leave a piece of clothing, shoes, turban, waistcoat, tunic, cap, etc., so that one arrived at the last gate clad only in trousers. Even then, one would not be able to see the sovereign who would be hidden by a finely plated basketwork screen. The private apartments of the sultan were divided into several rooms of which the largest presents curious characteristics which cannot yet be explained but which seem to be connected with some ritual surrounding the royal person. It is an important building, 13 meters square, with a single entrance on the south side into which is built a second square room of which the walls are connected with those of the first room by partitions, each provided with a narrow and low opening which one can only pass through by bending down. I found it fascinating that not only is there a description of the palace architecture but also some references concerning how the people may have moved and operated within the royal space. Unfortunately, the sources are inconsistent in describing who the architects were. Nonetheless, the Wara Palace remains a clear example of unique and wondrous African palace that's seldom mentioned in world history discourse. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey. Ooh, ooh. Hey, hey.